The Isaiah Thomas Tournament, known as the Zekan Tournament, is based out of Tacoma, Washington in the States. It is the most prestigious um, and most competitive basketball tournament out of all the Pacific Northwest. And everyone from, of course, Isaiah Thomas to Jamal Crawford to DeJounte Murray to Michael Porter Jr. to Paulo Banchero, all these guys have come through, Derek Rose have come through this tournament and made it what it is. And if you're looking for the best basketball on this side of the Pacific Northwest, this is the tournament. There's only 16 teams. We got in and we want to do something to be able to put Vancouver basketball on the map. We're not trying to just show up there and have a pickup run, get beat and go home. We decide to put together the perfect team. We knew that we had a team that could compete. Come in for a sec. Um, appreciate all you guys coming out to be a part of this. Appreciate me. Um, I want to give a shout out before we begin to. This is solely something we're doing for the culture to kind of just put, you know, the culture of BC basketball on the map and get people from the states to recognize that we have Hoopers out here and we can build that bridge and we can do big things out there. We're always going to be those guys from Canada. We look at the states like they're the states, but they're just those guys from Canada. We're trying to break that. So we got staying for two nights at this tournament. This tournament is Saturday and Sunday. We got Friday night and Saturday night there. We want to have a good time, but we don't want to just be those guys that go there, get our asses kicked, and then come back home and are not invited again. We're taking this extremely seriously. Appreciate you guys. we let him do his thing, kind of just uh, take over from here. Appreciate awesome. you. So. Thanks, Nate. Yeah, this is for the culture, man, for Vancouver, Canada, for us to go out on states and, and make a statement. We're going to get started. Uh, for those that have been to Ruthless Runs, it's, a, it's Ruthless Runs rules, right? Twos and threes straight to 11. And the reason why I do short games is we're simulating the last five minutes of the game. Every possession is critical, every single, every play is critical, every pass, rebound, everything matters, right? That's why that's why the format's like that in Ruthless, right? People ask, why don't you make longer games? No, I want every single possession to matter, right? So this is, this is what, what we're doing. Hemi runs Ruthless Runs, which is some of um, the most elite level runs you could find out in Metro Vancouver. And, and he's doing it and he's building something so amazing. And if, if you're trying to really hoop and get a good run in, that you gotta go to Ruthless. You just have to. And so with us um, and our elite leagues combined with Hemi and what he's doing at Ruthless, we're like, man, let's come together and let's make this trip happen. And Hemi come on board and, and help us pick the right team and, and put together the right guys to make this thing successful. I remember I got that text, uh, text message, or you know, we, I talked to Nate, he's like, hey man, we got in for next year, we wanna be part, part of this uh, event, uh, event coming up. I'm like, yeah, for sure, but I'm like, listen, you gotta pick, you gotta pick the right guys, right, um, to, to play in this, play in this uh, tournament in. And I, man, he found the right guys, man. Our captain, Joey Haywood, King Handle, internationally known street baller and pro baller that could just do it on all levels. Demi Harris, man, this guy is a round ball legend, all time leading scorer, most championships, most MVPs. Nobody can stop that guy out here. Clay Krellin, another guy who could just take over a game at any capacity. One of the most dominant players that we've seen in DC Hoops culture. We got Drew. Drew is D1 player, CEBL player, Team Canada player. This guy is a big that can just play like a guard if he wants to. He can do it all. We got James Lee Jerome, the UBC Hooper, one of the bigs up there. Um, just able to do his part down low and fit all the pieces that we needed as a big man. You got Alonzo Zool, what a beast. This guy will just get in the lane and dunk on you. And exactly that. Uh, he is just a human highlight reel to every effect. And 
player you need out there to compete in the States. Jarek, Jarek is our version of Steph Curry, man. Locked in shooter, guy can do it all, nice and shifty. He can get it going, he does not miss. Tyrone killed our first open run. He's like the most athletic dude on this team. Um, can just score at will, tons of fun to watch. Malcolm is a pro athlete and himself, former pro athlete, is just a shooter, a role player, someone that could just do everything you need him to do and play his part. Amazing Hooper. Going into a big day at the Z Can. You guys ready? Yeah. I'm ready. Yeah. That's what's up. That's what's up. Right. Malcolm, how you right. feeling? I'm feeling blessed, man. Yeah, definitely. Definitely grateful to be here, man. Ready to unleash, fam. Unleash. Ready to unleash. Yeah. <laughs> uh, get there early, get warmed up, and, and just sink in. Yeah, this is this big. This big. Thank you, Round Ball, Bench, uh, all the sponsors, Joey, everybody put it together. It's amazing. Coach Benson's here. He was here in Canada and U.S. He's, he's everywhere. He's, he's our head coach. We're going in. I'm there at Ruthless. It's going to be a big day today. Anybody that wants to come watch, follow our channels. Round ball, Ruthless. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. 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 Just so you can. It's, it's like Terry. Man, I feel good. I feel good. It's a good group of guys. A good moment. You know, just enjoying it. Enjoying it. Let's go. Are we going to get these first two or what? Say it again. Are we going to get these first two or what? Hey, that's the goal. Man, we had a we had an amazing start. Amazing start. Yeah, the first game was I think that was a good I'm not gonna lie, warm-up game. Um, to get our feel and see how everyone gels together. Uh, team chemistry kicked in right away. We created our own energy, like we were on each other, like just great vibes all around. The first game was a definite key. We had to win that first game and uh, you know, they were a good team, but I, you know, we had a lot more talented players. Uh, we had to push it because of the point spread, so that's why it was like a score like that. But those guys were good. Incredible experience that first game. It really built the camaraderie. It really got guys going in this tournament. On our end, we did a great job of, I would say, staying within ourselves. When we had a very substantial lead, um, we didn't start going to bad habits or, or kind of tear away from the game plan. Um, I think ultimately that discipline in the moment is what really stood out. Benson is a guy that's connected to Joey um, down from the States, but he also has ties in Canada. And he was just kind of the perfect blend because he knew the best of both cultures. He's an experienced coach. He took his team to the finals um, in the championship game at the Seattle Pro-Am. Like this is a special moment, not just for me to be a part of it, but I, for these guys in this, um, I know what it represents, I'll say just as a whole um, for, for this group from Vancouver to be representing, um, representing their, their stake, their claim, and saying that we're a part of this. Now people see, damn, these, these guys from Canada can, fuck, can run down the floor like that? Speed? Yo, that's that's crazy. But we've been always we always had that. It's just like Vancouver. We're just in a, our own bubble. Uh, we got excited. Got our confidence level high going into into the tournament into game two, uh, playing against uh, NBA player Quincy Pondexter. Crazy competitive game. The big gym was nuts. It's a whole different atmosphere down here. And the really cool thing about being on that main stage court is just being able to see us, Vancouver, just blossom out there. We were 
were in control the whole game, leading. Kind of let it slip a little bit, and it was just like a seesaw battle in the second half. The style of the game was much different. Like, they had one guy that just completely changed the tempo. Um, and, you know, we just uh, lost it at the end. Unfortunately, we didn't get the result we wanted, but, you know. The second game, a little, you know, a little, <laughs> it was a tough one. When we got a lead, we just got to, you know what I'm saying, like, really push on it, try and separate ourselves instead of trying to keep the game close. So whenever we got a lead, we got to take advantage of it and kind of keep it going, keep it going, so we we'll give them a chance to come back. Man, round ball did so well with the point differential going one of one that we made that championship bracket, man. We got to be in that bracket with the pros, with Isaiah, with DeJounte, and that feeling in itself, um, heading to the end of that day was a phenomenal one. Yeah, it was crazy being able to shoot these high caliber players. Isaiah Thomas, he's also one of my favorite Celtics of all time. Grab a few snaps with him. And the fact that he shared it was even more amazing. Unbelievable experience. That these guys made top eight and top eight teams in the Pacific Northwest was a, a phenomenal feeling. And, and everyone was really loving it and in a really good mood going into that night. You know, we got our mini putt on, we got our uh, bowling on, you know, we ate some good food. We were in the arcades a little bit. It was an awesome time of just everyone connecting and really getting to know each other a little bit more. You know what I mean? Just having those personal connections with each other, you know? We see each other a lot of the time. Some of us are really connected, but you know, others we may not be. And this was a really cool experience because everyone just really got to lock in get to know each other, build rapport, build chemistry, and build that brotherhood that basketball is and, and basketball stands for. Here we are, man, playoffs. This is it, win or go home, right? We just gotta win. Doesn't matter if it's a good win, ugly win, we just gotta win no matter what. Everyone was super confident going into that day, especially after the first two games with how quickly we gelled. Round ball was up for a little bit, and then, you know, towards the last five minutes, we kind of felt something switch. They full court pressed, and then we obviously don't have any plays, and we don't have any full court press breaks, and so that, that hurt us a little bit. Things weren't going our way. Yeah, we were just, I guess, not prepared for that moment, but there are a lot of times we could have executed at the same time, but we didn't. I think we also played very well. I think it was the speed and in like the last five or six minutes that got a hold of us. It was a really tough loss because I believe if we had won that, we would have played DeJounte the next game. It was a heartbreaker, but it was, it was something special because I really feel like we put Canada on the map with that, with that game. All right, so you see it. It's right there in our faces, okay? Every day you guys step on a court, you know what you're up against. Don't make yourself an, uh, uh, an obstacle as well. Got it? All right, hey, we're going round ball on three. Loud on me, loud proud on me. All right, come on. Round ball, one, two, three, round ball. These guys were so well connected, you know, everyone played their role. They performed so well out there. Teams were coming up to them asking like, who are you guys? Where are you guys from? Like, you know, what is this? They really put a stamp on what we were trying to achieve out there. And for me, the best moment, man, the best moment was definitely when the organizer was like, Nate, we have a spot for you next year. Like, y'all, 
we, we want you guys to be back. And that was, that was huge for me because, you know, came song conquered, you know, we, we put a stamp in there to the point where they know who we are and to the point where it's not just us trying to fight for a position anymore, but we've earned our keep. Yeah, no, I think if you look at the young kids in Vancouver now, they look up to us and they look up to what we're doing and they're getting a chance to go play um, in the States more with Drive and with Athlete and with other club teams, you know, that are that are around. They're going down to EYBL tournaments and they're getting that type of opportunity. So for them to look up to a potential of round ball and playing in a tournament like Seekend is something that every kid thinks about and wants to play in. And so for Vancouver to get invited back and to perform well and to continue to perform well, I think super important to one, show Seattle that Vancouver is legit at basketball and then also be able to just put on for the West Coast. In our culture, we talk so much about bring the NBA back, bring the NBA back, bring the NBA back. But man, with the road to Zekan, we were just like, why don't we just go to the NBA? You know what I mean? And so we took our crew and we, we did the research and we did the work and we took a team down to compete with some of these NBA guys. And it has been phenomenal. Um, it is something that we want to continue to do. We want to continue to elevate the culture of basketball in Vancouver. And this is just the start of what's happening. This is just the start of us being put on notice. And we're so excited about, you know, the purpose and the plan behind um, taking Hoops culture to another level, being connected to the Zekan tournament, and just being able to grow and develop and, and being recognized um, at this prestigious level, showcasing the fact that we got hoopers out here in Vancouver that could hoop with the best of them. Yeah, I'm actually going to be uh, translating for Jarek. Um, Jarek, you just take a chill. There you go, man. Okay, yeah, well, Jarek had a great time coming down with his family. Uh, they got stopped at the border for about an hour or so. Um, wasn't too bad. Uh, Jarek was a little bit uncomfortable because of the seat position. <laughs> oh, no, actually, he was very comfortable. He was meditating the whole way down. Um, they stopped at Chick-fil-A. Uh, Jarek likes Chick-fil-A, but he doesn't like Coca-Cola. He went straight for water, water and ice. Next question.